So before we continue, um, meaning building the geometry, we want to create the spline or the bent curve. And this is kind of straight. And then you see the slightly arcs. So I will introduce you now in Blender to the spline tool or the or 3D Bezier tool, which is pretty fantastic. I wish Illustrator would work the same way. So Shift S cursor to wall origin. Very good. Shift A add curve Bezier. And then let's zoom out. Press seven. You see it's pretty big. Go into edit mode. We go to overlay and turn normals off. Very good. Uh, we can set this back to bounding box. And then we say S and Y. Very nice. And then we press S and scale them down. Let's say like this. Very good. And um, I would like to, I will use kind of like maybe this upper edge here as a reference. Because the spline will at one point penetrate the object or be inside and it's hidden, I press G and Y in object mode and simply move it to here. So again, uh, I press tab to go into object mode and then G and Y. Very good. Then I can G and Z bring this one up and select this point and maybe bring it to there for the moment. Then I select this point, bring this one to there. Uh, I press S to scale the handle a little bit and then I press E to extrude, push it to there. Then I rotate that thing that make the handle line up actually with this edge. Press S. Okay. And you see here, this is still too big. So S. Maybe move this more to there and rotate this a little bit. There. How is this? This is good. I can move the handle. So you click this point and then VRG, we move it. Let's say, yeah, start capturing this pretty well. Looks nice. So here we want to extrude and continue this direction, which is why we switch to normal. You see then it has the orientation. Looks pretty cool because I, I just expanded along its normal. So select this point, E and escape, so we don't move it. And now we slide this one down, let's say to there, make it a little bit bigger. Pretty good. And here, this maybe I bring to there, tick, push it in. Maybe a little bit more down. Okay. If we zoom in, you can see that curve is a little bit faceted. So we go to the curve properties and set the resolution to 32. And it's smoother. Nice. Okay, so that was good. So that curve is pretty, pretty flat. Let's make a check. This should be a flat line. And we bring this one back to the center of our scan. That's the y-axis we set to zero. And there is actually also a way to make it viewport in front. Oh yeah, so this is kind of like an x-ray. So whatever we put in front, that thing always shines through, which is nice. The only problem is in edit mode, you don't see that curve. Wah, wah. So, which is why I moved it in front. Next step, select this point. Shift S, cursor to select it. 
out object set origin to a 3D cursor. That's important. Very good. And now comes the the trick. Now instead of building and sculpting everything already deformed, we're going to build the shell straight and then we use this curve to flow the surface along. Shift A, make a cube. I'm going to edit mode and we scale this one down there. Uh, I turn this one on so I can select through the mesh, AA, uh, select this stuff. We are in on X, so G and, G and X. Oh, I have normal turned on, whoops. G and X to there. Control R on this edge, edge make some cuts. Let's say like this, enter. Oh, did we want to do a test first? No, we want to deform this along this curve. Modifier and here they call it deform along a curve. We can actually click and select the Bezier curve. We only have one and boom, see, there it is. So what happens if we add a subdivision surface modifier? Then that result is smoothed. Check out what happens if we move this one up. The result is much better matching it. I mean, that is simply because we make um, a basic box. Then when we subdivide, with more points and then that stuff we bent. So this looks kind of okay. Mm, not really in love about this detail there. So let's press H, select this one. Maybe I push this one out a little bit more, Alt H. Yeah, no, this flow is better. It's also a little bit flat up there. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of did it a little bit. Let's pull this one back in. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So maybe let's turn this off for the moment. So we have to make sure, or <laughs> we have to re-sculpt this stuff. So what we will do first is we select this front face and delete it. So it's just an open part. And then we select this back area here and it's an open part, very good. Um, then select A. S and Z, and we scale this one down. Now every time when we go into edit mode and leave it, it it's being projected onto it, and that's kind of annoying. I wanna we want to see where this looks while we're modeling, so we can actually turn this on. And you see now that we have a, the projected or deformed geometry as an overlay, and we see the wireframe down here. G and Z, as you can see, we can bring everything down a little bit. Pretty cool. Um, here, this is the endpoint. So AA, uh, I will select these points, then um, go to this, S, X, and zero. I just scale it to the end. Very good, now this is better. And wireframe mode, yeah, okay, good, 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 good. So what's, what is, however, an, a consistent detail in this design? And that is actually this other edge. So what I will do now is first try to model it. So I'm capturing the, the flat, Side and then we dome the design. So to do this, I go into edit mode, go to edge select, alt click this, alt shift, alt shift, alt shift, click this edge, 
and then shift E and one, or I go to the mean crease. See now it's nice and flat. Uh, we can select A, S and Z, scale it down. But I maybe like to see this right there. Look at this, click. Now it also projects that stuff up to there. Pretty awesome. Uh, S and Z, one more time. G and Z, I move it down. Yeah, and you see now I'm starting to line up actually that edge. Pretty good. Yeah, so the curve here is too high. Little G and Z. Yeah, okay. We can call this maybe good. No, not really. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's do it this way. Okay, so this is kind of like part one. Now we can take a look at the width. So I go to your top view. And there you see, I want to make this here wider and I don't have, or do I have something? Yeah, I do have something to select. So Alt click this. And then this is now Y, S and Y, zip. There, I just scale it till it fits. Here, this is too wide. S and Y, maybe till there. There's the next one, S and Y. This one here, S and Y, there. Let's take a look at this. By the way, if I press Z, now you, you get to the overviews. You can also, to access these menus, uh, period, and the comma, or the left arrow and the, no, the right arrow is period, and then the left arrow is the orientation. So the two keys to the right of M. Okay, mm, that all looks pretty good. Alt B, let's do a little check. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slightly off, it's fine. Okay, maybe one last check here. If we are off everywhere, no, it's just that curve. That curve is. Not good. Maybe actually this line here isn't perfect. I will select this uh, S and Y, scale this apart just to see where we are. Same here, S and Y. I'll actually capture that edge pretty pretty well. There's here's that edge, old age. Yeah, and let's keep it that way. Hmm. So, control seven, I can take a look from the bottom. So, we're actually here. You see, we have a nice, interesting detail there. So, GG there. Um, Alt click this, S and Y. And then G and X, I slide this one back there. Um, control R, maybe before we do this, let's do this first. I wanna turn this off. Okay, so this is actually at the correct position. Um, I will do the following, S and Y, I'll out more, Control R, make a look at, get this closer, and then G and X, and then Control R, click, maybe G, G, go to there, S and Y, scale this one out, and turn this back on, so G, G, 
SNY, alt click, SNY. Okay, so <laughs> I thought this might work. It didn't. So alt click, shift alt click, GNX. Move this maybe to there. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, so GNX back. Maybe I need one more here in between. So control R, make a look at S and Y. Yeah, there we are. There we get that curve. Alt click this S and Y, we make it wider again. Okay, very good. You can see that this line is flat and then this actually gets an angle. That's not good. I want to have a nice arc. So I alt click this edge, GG, slide it back and then GG, slide it forward. And you see now they are at the, at the same angle. These are like some super fast uh, sub D modeling tricks. Let's turn this on. Hmm, not there yet. So we might have to select all these three loops, G and X, and then there, there we are. Move them all over. Alt click, shift, alt click, S and Y. Slide them in there. Perfect. Cool. This actually captures the the width seen from the top pretty good. This later is going to be a funny detail and this was actually not too complicated. So let's take a look at how can we do the top part. So this is arced. That means, well, we need a loop cut. So control R onto here, uh, press zero and enter so it doesn't move. And then G and Z move up, and you see it moves up everywhere the same. Um, here's just a little bit, even, and then it gets bigger. So now our task is to press G and Z, move it up till this is done. And then we can click on this. Uh, in front, does that work? Oh, yeah. It works very good. So here I went to the object properties. Now I can select this point. Uh, so this is kind of funny that he, the widget is here, but the point is there, which is in reality, it is there. So using that widget in this case doesn't really make much sense most times or it can be confusing, just be aware of it. Or simply select a point and then you just say GZ. Yeah. Oh, we can keep it this way, very nice. Sweet. Now this shape is actually not looking that complicated um, to model with sub -Ds, but with sketches we already are having a lot of construction planes and all the stuff to do. So which is the advantage here? So, control R, zero and enter. Here we do the same deal. We scale this down till it hits there. And this time I will start down here, move this out there. Uh, there. There, this a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, um, before I continue, nice smooth curves or transitions. You see this kind of like a C, ideally we move this a little bit to there, so it's concave and then convex when it flows into this line. Let's take a look here. I don't like this. So you, you, you. Uh, okay. Uh, S, Z, and zero. I make them all the same. Let's see. Yeah. 
So, which means that um, these edges, the distance is always the same because I just straighten it here. Mm -hmm. Very good. There. Okay, so here actually we can see, well, maybe now we should turn this off. Uh, this is arced. And here, this is now tricky to see. Um, so I will just simply model it for you. We can maybe add, an, no, yeah, we do this first. So you see how this is extruded, which means we need another face here. So control R, maybe go to there and let's double check how much geometry I have there. Yeah, that's maybe okay. Then I go to, go to do this first. I select you, 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 and fill you, you, you you fill with F, then this, this, and this, we crease this edge, this edge, and this edge, we crease also this edge, we crease. So it's kind of like a spatula now. And we have this, this here added, which means when I select this and this, and press E when I extrude it down, there's another extrusion. These vertical edges here I want to select and crease. And also this we crease. And then there uh, I'm selecting these edges. I crease too. There, very good. Okay. Basically, now we'll see just in a second what we're building. So now, uh, and all we have to do now is uh, AA, oh, to press C, select all this, maybe move this forward, AA, select all this, move this to there. Yeah. Okay, AA, select all this. Then when we move up, um, this is actually not arced. So S, Z, and zero, we straighten it. And there we are, let's see, pretty close. Um, now, how do we do the rotation? Because this is at an angle. Uh, we'll select this point, S, and cursor to select it. Then we turn this on, then we select all these faces. And here is the cool trick now, we shear this. We go to the shear command and that's probably this one. Yeah, I think that's how much this shears. We have to guess here a little bit. There. Pretty cool. So if I go to your top view you now, and you see this is nice and art, and then blah, it gets flatter, and that's kind of, that stinks a little bit. So we will select this, 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 and the scale tool, and scale this apart a little bit. So we make this again more convex instead of an S shape. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So with that done, we can actually select these two points and move them up. And there's the dome actually for getting the, or putting the bristles on. Could also put this up, put this a little bit lower. 
So how big is this actually going up? Well, we are close. So let's undo these steps actually. I want to select all these points, go to the brush, turn this on again. And there, a wireframe mode, and then I move this one up and just pay attention to till that seems to be kind of like, yeah, so there we are. Very good. This looks pretty, pretty sufficient. This detail here is not 100% the way how it's built. This is actually a little bit flat, and then this is perfectly round. Um, who cares? We can sharpen this with one extra loop cut. Bang. And there we have it. But I don't like this to be so sharp, so I don't do it. This is sufficient. Um, but because we, yeah, let me show this again when I add this. You see how this sharpens? But then we also probably get here a little crease. So there you can see this comes up and then it terminates and gets flat. So let's perfect the flow a little bit in edit mode here, this one. Um, I will move up to, to there and these S and Z and there. Okay, so now this is nice and flat. Zip. Let's take a look. Yeah, you see that shadow there? That's what I was trying to prevent. But unfortunately, well, we what we could do is this point and this point, we separate them. Okay, now well, this, this is, for example, better. Or if we don't really need the super sharp edge, we select the center line and just say bye bye. Actually, this looks nicer, nice and soft. Okay. So then this one. We bring back maybe to there. Or let's snap to there. Should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Man. Awesome. To close the end, this is another area now where um, this type of geometry modeling is super superior in terms of flexibility. A lot of the stuff what we've built so far, I can do in Fusion easily too. Not as fast, but it's it's very doable, but it's just the labor and that takes more time. But the end caps, rounded ends are really painful to do. With sub D, they're super easy if you know how to work with the layout well. So let's show the brush and we go into edit mode. Then select this, we slide this one back, maybe till there. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and then here's the trick, uh, E and escape. So we extrude, then we move this one out and we will rock you. Zip. Uh, we sharpen this and then you and you, these two edges we fill, these two edges we fill. Now this looks kind of blue. So these two edges and these two edges we also have to sharpen. Bang. But now this gets really white, which is kind of silly. So. We turn this off. No, 
can see this we can move down to this edge or height and to this point. Let's take a look. So that's already better. But from here, this is too flat. So hello, you too. And back to there. And then you and you zip. Goes to there a little bit. Maybe let's take a look at the top. Mm. Ah, that's why. See how I get this arc? The service is pinching is because they are too close. So A, A so all this input game adjust slight geometry. So okay, now we can select this, bring it to there, A, A select this, bring it to there. There we get that flow now. Uh, AA, select these two, maybe S and Y, scale them apart a little bit more. Oh, pretty good match. So all that is pretty good, but mm, not there. So, and this is now um, another area where this type of capping is super easy. So this edge and this edge, I will subdivide. So edge subdivide, go to point mode. I will hide the brush for the moment. Then this point and this point, we click and press J. J actually cuts an edge in. And you see it recreates the webbing. And again, the surface always flows between points and all these edges. And now I have a nice point which I can move up boom. and there's another point. Maybe move it forward, Bow. forward, down, there we are. Awesome. Okay, I thought this. And right click in object mode smooth. Let's go to matcap, make this nice and glossy. Rotate around. Uh, I don't see a good shading. What about this one? And you can see the highlights just flow superb over it. Super good. Okay, really nice. So I let it stretch and then it gets compressed. By the way, now this is actually also what I'm talking about G1 and G2. How do highlights make a, tr a transition from one area to the next? So the, because this is sharp, so the highlight gets compressed, and you want these um, these changes from wide to small always as smooth as possible. And this is pretty good. Um, let's see if we can spot the bad design in here. Um, Joseph, Joseph Brush. Images. Maybe is that a good big image? Let's see. Uh, this is gray. Maybe there is good work. Nine. Shh, stop. Just show me the image. That's all I want. Oh, yeah, there. So, screenshot. This area which I'm marking, there you can see there's actually a line. And that is um, this area. Bigger. 
here was the original stuff and then they blended the rest in. And that looks pretty crappy. And actually, we do not have this. This is much, much better. Okay, I would say this pretty much sums up um, our design here. We can smooth this out, perfect this a little bit more as we want. Let's see what can we maybe do to get the same detail in they have. Control R, let's make a loop cut there. This point has to go down to this edge. Okay, and then it has to slide forward a little bit. Uh, whoop. <laughs> Slightly wrong. Okay, zip. There, this is roughly what they have. So because this is actually arced, to be honest, these points are actually further back. So that this whole thing is arced more. But I really like actually my original design more. So I'm just cutting this out. It's a nicer flow. It's nice and fluid. What actually happens if we select these edges and turn this off? Uh, nah. This is nice how this completely goes around. But these edges are becoming an issue. So let's make this this way again. Very good. OK, let's. Um, Turn this one about this material. Really make use of the mat caps. They're actually terrific, particularly because we now have also the zebra. We can nicely see if there are anywhere kinks in our surfaces. That oh, looks pretty good. Back to studio. And this sums up actually the first part for sculpting this element. I know this was a little bit longer, sorry. 